Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with David Larkins, who is the line editor on Pendragon, and that has a new starter set, which is being released in just a few short days. I sat down with him and we talked about non-lethal combat. Not every battle has to end with characters dying. And when you're playing a system that has very lethal combat, it's very easy to die in Pendragon if things go wrong, and you're playing characters that don't necessarily want to be cutting their way through all their enemies because they're noble knights, having non-lethal fighting as an option becomes very important. So David shares all kinds of advice on how non-lethal combat can be used in Pendragon and how it can make all kinds of games exciting. I'll jump across the interview in just a moment, but first, please remember to subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'm actually going to come in with a hot take right off the bat here. So <laughs> I, I I was thinking about it, and and, and I feel like um, I feel like a lot of RPG combat is technically non-lethal because who enjoys having their character get killed? Uh, from a single stab wound or falling off their horse or whatever. It's interesting to me because when we talk about non-lethal combat in an RPG, we're already kind of talking about something that's a couple removes from reality. There's non-lethal combat in reality, which is sport combat, you know, where you, you have your protective gear and your um, blunted weapons or what have you. Uh, and then there's non-lethal combat in an RPG context. Now, obviously I'm splitting hairs because when we say non-lethal combat in an RPG, we're, we're, we are talking about mechanics that are designed to not kill your character, even within the, the scope of whatever combat mechanic is already going easy on your character. So <laughs> that's sort of my, my initial hot take out of the way. Well, that, that's a great place to start. Do you see that there is a, a difference, a material difference between non-lethal combat as it is applied to your character, your PC, and non-lethal mm -hmm. combat where maybe you're using a weapon that deals you know, knockout damage to enemies uh, as non-lethal? Yeah, it, well, that's exactly it. And um, certainly in some systems that are a little deadlier, um, that that is an important distinction. Um, whereas other, I, you know, it's it's interesting because it, it really comes down to like what the game's goals are, mechanically speaking, where, um, for instance, if you're running a game that's designed to sort of emphasize the tropes of like pulp uh, action, where you can knock out somebody with a single punch or a clock to the back of the head or even like you know your old gi joe cartoons where the the, <laughs> the plane gets blown up and the guy always pops out with a with a parachute or whatever pendragon actually has a pretty deadly combat system which is part of the fun of the game actually because there's always a, a tension since your job is is to fight as a knight how messed up you're going to be <laughs> by the end of the combat and that's why there's valorous checks and major wounds and unconsciousness and all that other stuff that's kind of there to to save your character from just getting completely taken out um but of course also it's a medieval fantasy game so you have tournaments you have jousting and the melee and all that kind of stuff and so the game actually has dedicated rules for like when you're using blunted weapons you can with you can voluntarily withhold your blows you know one thing i actually really like in sixth edition um in the combat system uh that that greg kind of threw in just a little minor thing but i think it's, it's a great little detail is that if you're uh, withholding your damage you can state that it's either muscular like you're just not hitting as hard or you can just say like i'm hitting my opponent but i'm hitting them with like the flat of my blade or the butt end of my spear or whatever and if every single blow is landed like that and you're fighting another knight by the end of the combat if you defeat them they lose a point of honor because you've basically just been messing with them you've basically just been slapping them around with your sword right <laughs> you're like like or your scabbarded blade or whatever it may be we're going to talk about the various aspects of non-lethal combat here but I want to start with a very obvious question. Why would you want non-lethal combat in a game? What are the reasons that you want to include that in a narrative? So I think first and foremost, like what I already sort of foreshadowed, which is, is it a genre trope? Um, are you playing a martial arts game where you're just going to be wailing on each other to a degree that in the real world would not 
happen either because both parties would get completely exhausted or somebody would get a concussion or whatever um or you know a superhero genre game where you know you're just throwing each other through walls and and uh you know just sort of trying to subdue your opponent rather than kill them right so that's a b is uh in a game where the lethality is not um shied away from or it's maybe even a central part of the game like in pendragon but it's there as an option so there are times when just simply killing your opponent actually is the suboptimal outcome maybe they're uh possessed or otherwise not themselves you don't want to kill them you want to just subdue them so that they can kind of like come back to themselves you know or they're more valuable alive than dead obviously right you know like they have a ransom or they have a, a reward out on their head or they have important information that only they know killing them's not going to really work thirdly like if if you just want a, a way to just kind of have mock combat and just for the fun of it like like they would say in the middle ages for love this is a joust for love that means for love of the joust itself, not for actually trying to cripple your opponent, for example. So let's dive into these a little bit deeper. Uh, I want to start with talking about non-lethal combat in the context of a game or a system or a story where lethality is part of the narrative. Mm -hmm. What are some of the pitfalls that you want to avoid uh, when you're including that? What are some of the ways that you can best run it? You want to look for... I mean, this is assuming that the game itself isn't already giving you some mechanics, right? You know, I mean, like, some games will have, like, uh, you know, hit points and, like, stun points, you know? And, like, once you're out of stun points, you fall unconscious or whatever. Uh, but, you know, what you're, what you're looking for, though, really, is uh, any kind of mechanic that's going to let you sort of narratively take out your opponent, right? So if there's knockdown rules, you want to figure out a way, how can I knock my opponent down? How can I disarm them? You know, how can I grapple them? The dreaded G word of any role-playing game. <laughs> Grappling mechanics, right? Um, but, you know, it they, they can be fun. I, I, do, I do like a good grapple from time to time. <laughs> In some games, you get put into a situation where introducing a non-lethal option can feel like a bit of a cop-out. Uh, is there a way that you can reduce players experiencing that? By presenting uh, a reason for non-lethal combat. That's that's really the key, right? Uh, so if there's important information that you need from this person that you're facing off against, or if it's within the context of a tournament, or even like a uh, friendly rivalry where it's sort of like, like for instance, uh, one time I ran a game where I wanted the, the players to learn the combat system without it being high stakes. And this was like a kind of a pulp sci-fi setting where they are all like literal space cadets, you know, they were members of the Space Academy or whatever. So I just started it out with them in, at the Academy doing like buffer combat, you know, where they had the, the big staffs with the, you know, the padded ends and their helmets and everything. It was a system where the non-lethal and the lethal were just different ends of the same spectrum. So it was easy enough to just say, okay, so you're taking X amount of stun damage, but you're not really hurting and you'll recover. And we're really just seeing who gets knocked over first. So yeah, you can you can even use non-lethal mechanics as a way to, to teach this, the combat system, which can be fun. Games like Pendragon and RuneQuest often include yielding rules where you'll have mm -hmm somebody who in the midst of lethal combat will throw up their hands and give up how do you know when to start that scene how do you know when to set the process and make the lines between someone yielding or not clear that's actually one of my favorite like moments to game out um and of course in terms of incentivizing that both pendragon and runequest you have ransom values for characters so you're you're making it important you know important enough for for characters including npcs who are kicking the player character's butts, you know, to maybe just stop and go, hmm, do you surrender? Because I'd really like to get some ransom on you. You're worth a lot. Um, so you can either just do it when it feels right. Someone's just bleeding and uh, kind of near death, and the, the other character is just like, oh, I, I don't want to kill this guy. Um, or 
make a leave it up to a die roll. So like in Pendragon, you have Valorous and Prudence. You could oppose those two traits. In uh, RuneQuest, you could roll against one of your runes maybe to see if your, if your uh, reason prevails over your hot-bloodedness. Um, and that can be fun too, like especially if the player is kind of like, yeah, I could go either way, you know? <laughs> then it's like, all right, let's leave it up to a roll and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I find generally that the moment presents itself naturally because of, like, for example, I'll just keep going back to Pendragon here, but like, you know, there is an unconscious value of your, once you've lost three quarters of your hit points, your character's going to fall unconscious anyway. So, and that's very purposely in there to create situations where you're not fighting all the way to zero hit points and you die and you go, oh, whoops. <laughs> um, so that, that often will just solve itself, honestly. Um, but there are also rules for those stubborn player characters who just want to keep on fighting, you know, and, and that's their prerogative. I've heard stories from some groups of players, uh, particularly in games like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, where there is more of a focus on just tearing through walls of enemies, where somebody surrenders and then suddenly the dynamic changes very sharply. Suddenly mm -hmm. there's a prisoner involved and that can bring up a lot of moral issues that the game necessarily wasn't focusing on. It can be, it can be quite uh, jarring because it doesn't necessarily gel with the larger format of the story what do you think mm -hmm. of situations like that i mean that, that is that is your classic uh situation you know when you're you're talking about the alignment system and um you know what would my character do i you know one could almost make an argument that that moral dilemma is where uh rpgs might have started to transition away from just being a version of a war game into being something new because suddenly the players are thinking those classic words, what would my character do in this situation? <laughs> Finding themselves suddenly having a, an ethical crisis, <laughs> you know, uh, possibly because of alignment, but also just as a player, you know, like, well, you know, it's the orc babies question. You, you've, you've gone into this orc layer, you've killed all the warriors, and suddenly you find the room with all the, the orc mothers and children. What do you do? You know, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing question. You, you still see discourse about it online. Um, so, you know, in that's, I mean, that is another version of, of non-lethal mechanics in that, in that sense. It's an interesting way to look at it. Let's talk about the more formal kind of sports like, you know, jousts and tournaments and, uh, the example that you gave there. Do you have any tips for how to make these scenes exciting when you're including them in your games? Obviously you want to set things up, uh, again, so you have some player buy-in. So like, you know, if it's a tournament what's the prize what do you get for winning um are you fighting for someone else or something else are you fighting for your honor are you fighting on behalf of your beloved who is watching you are you fighting for the prize money whatever uh once you've set that up then the, the player buy-in just naturally follows and it's sort of like, it's, it's always fun to, to see people like suddenly get very competitive. Um, and that's partly because it's non-lethal, right? They know that they can kind of take it, take it to the mat, so to speak, and uh, really give it their all and not really worry about, I mean, you know, accidents happen, but, you know, <laughs> uh, not really worry too much about uh, accidentally killing somebody. You know, um, it, it's sort of like, gives everyone license to just really cut loose and and that sense of fun you know whenever i run tournaments in pendragon like that that sense of fun always permeates the experience what about pitfalls what are some things to be aware of or to avoid one of the things to avoid uh honestly is for it to drag on too long um you know if you if you have a round robin style joust or tournament you don't want to just be doing a bunch of non-lethal combat for two hours uh, you want to be able to just kind of move things ahead. And then also the, the tricky thing there is like as people get eliminated, uh, if, if one player character is kind of making their way up the tree, that's great, but now everyone else is just kind of sitting around. Um, now, sometimes that can be fun. Sometimes the players actually become the audience and they're like cheering on their fellow player character. But another fun thing you can do 
and it takes some weight off your shoulders as the GM, is hand the other players the NPCs and say, why don't you roll for the opponent in this joust or this round of the whatever, you know, fight is going on. I'm going to throw a third example of non-lethal combat towards you, and that is the sort of sure. escalation of force moment. Your, your characters are wandering down an alley, and they get set on by a couple of bandits who are there to deliver a message from, you know, the local thieves' guild or whatever. You mm-hmm. don't necessarily want to chop everybody's head off because mm-hmm. you're, if you're playing in, you know, a, a very story-driven sort of situation where murder is going to have huge consequences. Do you have any tips about using non-lethal combat in that context where escalation of force is sort of something to consider? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's also the classic, like, superhero dilemma, right? That's why... Batman mostly just uses his his fists, feet, and gadgets, you know, to defeat his opponents. He doesn't, you know, doesn't just come in with a gun, uh, <laughs> you know. So that's that's one of the that's I would say that's like the the foremost thing is um, don't you know don't bring a gun to a knife fight that kind of thing, right? So if I'm going to have those bandits jump the player characters, they're not going to come out with unsheathed swords and start threatening lethal force right off the bat you know they're going to come out like just kind of you know doing that and you know they got their brass knuckles and their chains and they're just like you know look out for boss so and so you know get off of our back you know now if the player characters escalate uh you might also want to kind of set the thing up so maybe the bandits have a sniper up on the roof as well that's kind of covering everybody like i wouldn't do that if i were you you know that kind of thing right so you do want to kind of think ahead or let the players get themselves into trouble if they insist on murdering these bandits in the alleyway well guess what the boss isn't going to be too happy about that (laughs) you know um and maybe just do a little out of character moment with the group and say you realize what you're doing here right (laughs) before you let them go ahead with it what do you think of non-lethal buttons for want of a better word i know in some Hmm. systems you can freely say i make this attack non-lethal and there's Mm -hmm no difficulty to it, and it's just totally applied. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great. Um, you know, Pendragon's one of those, where you just simply say, I'm withholding my blows, and that's that. You know, that's all you have to do. Um, I think that that is, you know, probably the easiest way to integrate non-lethality into your games, even if your system doesn't really have uh, or pay a lot of attention to non-lethal combat. Just make a little house rule that says, anytime you want, you can designate that you are making a non-lethal attack with your weapon or whatever and you know maybe like keep track of phantom hit points so it's like when when their phantom hit points you know their stun points their resolve points whatever you want to call them hit zero they surrender rather than die do you think that it's important to have a trade-off if your character's trying to be non-lethal should it be more difficult for you uh, depends on the kind of game you want, honestly. You know, um, again, like genre conventions. You know, if you want to encourage more fisticuffs, make it easier. Uh, if you want your game to be pretty, you know, grim and bloody, yeah, it's like you know, because I mean, realistically, yeah, if you're if you're realistically treating non-lethal combat or as realistically as possible with an RPG, it is hard to knock somebody out. It is hard to just start punching somebody without hurting yourself. <laughs> um, Weapons were invented for a reason, you know? So uh, it really kind of depends on on what your outcome, what you want your outcome to be. But that in and of itself is, is kind of cool because it lets you sort of calibrate where you want your game reality to be, kind of getting back to my original point. You know? This is an interesting take on non-lethal combat, but in a situation where maybe you're playing grand champions of a high fantasy game and you've got a bunch of clerics and paladins in your party who can just blast you full of resurrection magic even a big fight where you die might not necessarily be lethal in the same way Uh, do you have any thoughts on that oh yeah i mean that that's exactly what i was saying with my hot take is that you know i i didn't want to name the elephant in the room but yeah DD combat is not very lethal it's not lethal in the sense that hit points are extremely abstract and you're not really keeping track of whether somebody's blown their knee out or, you know, uh, had their collarbone crushed or whatever. 
And also, like you say, there's magic. There's healing magic. There's resurrection magic. There's death saves. There's all these different things that are put there as bumpers to kind of keep the characters from just, you know, evaporating in the in the face of uh, monstrous opposition. Uh, and that's fine. It, it's 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 an interesting way to think of it, though, because I don't think people really talk about it in that in that context that it's D D combat is inherently sort of non-lethal you know? as a final point just to throw out to you before we finish up if mm -hmm. i'm a gm who is running a game and it hasn't really occurred to me to include non-lethal combat in the stories that i'm telling why would it be exciting for me to do so well for one thing it just really opens up uh options it creates fun and exciting combat moments. Uh, speaking of d and I was playing D&D a few years ago, and I had a character who was not like a huge damage dealer, but was, you know, pretty nimble, had like a big acrobatics skill bonus. And I, I just asked the DM, I said, can I do like, we were fighting next to like a, a well, and I said, can I do like a flip and like kind of hook this, this hobgoblin with my, with my ankles and just sort of like throw him off over the side into the well and the dm's like yeah that sounds awesome you know <laughs> and it's like when you're giving more options than just swinging your sword or whatever uh you know seven c is great at this right where you you kind of like you're setting up an action scene and it's like all right well describe to me what you what you want to do and it can be things like you know i'm gonna I'm just going to like punch this guy out or I'm going to like knock them down, sweep their legs out from under them, throw them over the side and there'll be a Wilhelm scream, whatever. Like you can have those, those fun moments and it's more than just like I swing and I hit and I do this much damage.